So, hi everybody. Thank you for coming to this session. We are going to speak about are you structure bindable? Uh, C17 structure binding. And can we check whether a certain type is, is structure bindable? So, we would have a quick tour through concepts, uh, and uh, the tour would take us to the pattern matching is and as which is currently not in the language, but is a proposal out there. So this is the plan. Um, I would warn you that it's mostly a game. I mean, I'm playing with, with the language. Um, it might be that you would not get anything useful from this talk. So, so if you want to reconsider, uh, but, but we would play with C++ a bit. So, uh, a bit about myself. I'm a lecturer at the Academic College of Tel Aviv Yafo and Tel Aviv University, also a member of the Israeli ISO C national body, co organizer of the Core CPP conference and meetup group, and developer advocate at Incredibuild. We have a booth out there, uh, and I would speak shortly about Incredibuild. This is the uh, required marketing plug. So, um, if you are suffering from uh, slow builds, uh, it might be. Come talk to us. We have a booth out there. If you haven't taken your shirt yet, this is the shirt. Uh, so either, either you are a raster in disguise, or uh, I don't know how you didn't take a shirt yet. Take it from our booth um, and talk with us if you are not using Incredibuild. Um, let's talk about structure binding. So in C17, we have a new um, syntax, quite Pythonic, that allows us to uh, get the values from um, a tuple, uh, a pair, an array, uh, C-style arrays, and uh, struct with all public fields. Um, I would not go through the uh, reference in CPP reference, but um, I, I would show a, a momentarily a piece of code that would remind us of this syntax. Okay, so um, let, let's uh, see a piece of code. Uh, Tuple-like tuple types, for example, Suppose that we have uh, a tuple. By the way, this tuple doesn't say the type, so most probably we are in C17 using class template auto deduction. Uh, and we're in C17 because we are also using structure binding. So we create a tuple uh, and we want to extract from the tuple A, B, C first as a reference. So if we take A1, B1, and C1 by reference, then if we change one of them, the actual T would be changed. On the other end, if we take them by value, which is the third line, uh, I mean the auto with the brackets of A2, B2, and C2, then we got A2, B2, and C2 by value. Changing A2 does not change T. This is the uh, syntax for structure binding, which is quite useful. Uh, for example, suppose that you loop over entries in a map, and you want to take the key and the value, you, uh, not, you do not need uh, uh, to use first and second. You can just take it directly to your, to your uh, variables with a proper name. Um, you can do the same for pair, because pair behaves like a tuple. I mean, pair does have also the get function. So you can call it with get, with uh, triangle brackets, zero or get one. Uh, so it would be the same. Uh, you can even do that with std array, and the reason is that std array also behaves like a tuple. It's a tuple-like type. I mean, what makes it a tuple-like type? There's the get function, it has tuple size, and it has tuple element. So if you have all those three, you can even create your own type, which would behave like a tuple and would and could uh, uh, use structure binding. Uh, so if you want to create your own type uh, that supports uh, structure binding, then it should have the get, either a member-wise get or a specialized version, version of a global std get. Uh, it should have a, a std tuple size and a std tuple element. Uh, let's take a look at an example. Let's open Compiler Explorer with a short example. So we have here a user bindable type. This user bindable type has three members, uh, int, string, and double. We have a constructor. It is not the struct with public members. It's not the case. It's a case of private members, but 
we do have a get function here. In this case, it's a member function. We could create it as a specialization in, uh, inside std. Uh, on the other end, the uh, tuple size and tuple element must be implemented inside uh, as a specialization for uh, tuple element on our specific type. And once we have that, we can uh, use structure binding on our own type. Okay, that's nice. We can uh, take the variables uh, the, the same that we would get through get and triangle brackets. Uh, and, and if I would put in a comment any of the requirements, I mean, I do not have tuple size, I guess that something would break here. Yeah, I cannot use structural binding because I do not have tuple size. If I uh, say, okay, I get tuple size back, but I do not have tuple element, so I guess it would be the same. You need all these three requirements. Okay, so this was our own type which is structure bindable because it is uh, tuple-like. I mean, it behaves like a tuple. Uh, let's go back to the slides. And uh, we can also uh, bind C-style arrays, even um, multidimensional arrays. Like, for example, in this case, we have a two-dimensional array um, um, initialized with one and two for the first row, three and four, and two zeros. And we can here bind the rows. So once we bind the rows by reference, it means that we have a reference to a three items array. A1 can, we can access A1 at index zero and we actually change the original array here. That's nice. And we can, of course, use it also for uh, one single uh, dimension array. Uh, so this was the C-style array case. And it works also for structures with public only fields, like for example, this one, which has three fields and we can bind the fields of the structure. Okay, so this was a quick introduction about what is structure binding uh, and when can we use it. And then the question here is whether we can create a concept, like for example, we want a tuple. Yeah, it's not a typo, we want a tuple of two. Uh, so we want to get only um, to, to, to constrain, uh, to constrain our function that it would be able to take only items, only uh, uh, arguments which are tuple, uh, which means uh, we should create some kind of a concept that says, um, well, you can be structure binded into two variables. And then we know in the function that we can use structure binding to A and B. And the question is whether we can create this concept. So let's try. So uh, our first attempt would be just to say, okay, we have a concept named tuple, uh, which is um, templated over T. It requires that for a T, uh, small t, you can bind T into A and B. And the problem is that we try to do something inside the concept which is not legitimate for concept. We cannot actually do the structure binding. I mean, we can try that, but no, um, it's not legit to try and create something inside the concept. Uh, we're trying to create variables and, and we cannot do that. We, we can try and call a function, but we cannot assign something to a, to a new variable. So no, uh, the, the syntax of concepts doesn't allow that, unluckily. So we need to look for something else. So second attempt, let's try to have a lambda inside the concept. And then it might be that inside the lambda, we try to do something, but we do not call the lambda. So either the lambda is valid or the lambda is not valid. And if it is not valid, then it means that the concept is not valid, which means, okay, you do not obey to this concept. So we have here a tuple, that requires that. We have a lambda uh, that gets the same T uh, and tries inside to do the structure binding, but we actually do not call the lambda, but it still needs to compile. And again, the problem is that it is not so legitimate. I mean, GCC thinks that it is. I think that Clang here uh, is more accurate. It does not compile that. But even though GCC does compile it, 
it does not really work as we want. Why? Because um, it works for a two, and two, in our case, this is two, is a structure with two variables. I mean, for, for GCC, I, I should try to find something that would work for both, but let's just take a look at GCC and, and see, does it work in GCC? And it doesn't, I, I mean, yeah, it works for a two, but suppose that we want to call it with a one, and uh, the one case is a single field struct. And then the question is whether it would go to the unconstrained function at line 39, or whether it would go to the constrained function at line 35. Well, I, I, I certainly prefer it to go to the uh, 39 function, right? So the question is, if I uh, uncomment this one, would it go to this one, the constraint one, or to the second one? And the answer is none of the above. It would just have a compilation error because it becomes an odd error. It's odd error and not, and not uh, Sphina. It's not, it's not soft uh, uh, failure. And, and eventually in, in concept, you need something that, okay, uh, the compiler can decide not to compile that and it means that the concept fails, but the concept is still valid. And here, the concept is not valid because inside, we have something that the compiler tried, but not in the context of evaluating the concept. And no matter how you play with that, the Lambda itself is compiled in the context of it should compile. And if it doesn't, then it is hard at all. Okay, so we need to seek for something else. Uh, this was the second attempt. Okay, so. Covering all cases except structures by requiring T to be either a tuple or a tuple-like or a C-style array, this is something doable. We would take a look how to do that, but it would not cover the struct case, okay? By the way, I don't know if you remember anyone here was at Daisy talk yesterday. The topic was quite the same. She started with the uh, mechanics but the mechanics was on, on that topic in a way, and I would, at the end, um, come to something quite similar, not exactly the same. So um, let, let's take a look about uh, how we can do that for something which is not a struct. Okay, so um, it is going to be a, a, a bit cumbersome. I, I would not go through the entire code, but, but um, we ask you to have a get for a certain uh, num given number. Uh, we ask you um, to have either a member get, a member uh, a global get, or a member get. If you have a member get, so we cannot say t dot get because it's a template. T is a template, and 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 at you, t is a template argument, and and get is a template function. So in order to get to call a template function. If you remove the template here, you get compilation error. The compiler says, oh, can you please be kind enough to throw in the template keyword so I would understand that you are calling a template function? Okay, so I would add that. So we are asking it to have a get function and then to have a, a size, etc. all the requirements that make you um, tuple-like. And then after having all these, we can go to um, asserting like for example, asserting that um, tuple has a global get, and uh, this is to check our concepts. And uh, tuple of int as is get n with an int if we ask it for the sequence at position one. Uh, and why position one? Should it be oh uh, makes index sequence one create something that has the zero there? So eventually we have the relevant concepts, and then we can create structure bindable with, which is the concept that I'm going to use below, or another one that I'm going to use structure bindable with a size. So, oh, 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 sorry, back, this was the one. So, um, if I go to uh, our uh, example, so in the main I'm calling a few tests, so we have a tuple here, and I can ask the tuple, like a static assert, uh, does the declare type of A that I got here is the same as int? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
this doesn't relate to our case. It's just a check, but our case is here. Does the structure bindable, the cloud type of T at uh, element three, um, is it true? I mean, this is a concept. The concept at the, at the end is true or false. So I'm taking the concept and asking, okay, can you tell me whether uh, the declare type of T, this is the T, is structural bindable with three elements? This is the concept that I wanted here. Uh, and then I uh, use the other one, structure, structure bindable with, if I give you the, the declare type of T, is it structural bindable with int, quant, char, star, and double? Yes, true, it is. So I can play with that and I can use it uh, to constrain the function. Suppose that I want to get from you some argument and I want the argument to be structure bindable with int, control star, and double, I can ask for it. Um, the same I, I would do for a pair and I can do the same for std array, but I cannot do the same for struct. When I try to do the same for a user defined struct uh, with all public fields, I fail because it is not supported. I mean, if I would try to say, hmm, maybe you can tell me if this is structure bindable, I think that the assert would fail. Uh, because the concept doesn't work. With, we do not have a get triangular uh, brackets for struct. I think that there is a proposal for that, but, but we do not have. And we do not have a specialized version of size, tuple size, or tuple element for user-defined struct. So no, this one is not supported. Okay. Um, so we need to think, okay, we, we solved uh, the uh, and for C-style array, we can also support that. I'm not sure that the example sh uh, presented that, but it, it is doable. Then the question is, can we still support um, user-defined structs? Uh, so it can be achieved with uh, compiler interest intrinsic fe features. Uh, I got, uh, I presented that in a meetup. Uh, in our core C++ meetup, and I got uh, after the meetup, uh, in some cases people after the meetup use the spare time before going to sleep to, to try, maybe I can do that. And I got from Avi Latmish a uh, um, link saying, oh, I could do that, but using some internal uh, compiler intrinsic, like for example here, uh, there is a, here a permissive declare value. Um, which uh, can be used in evaluated context. So this is not intrinsic. This is something that you can write on yourself because the, 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 use, the declare value in the language uh, cannot be used in an evaluated context, only in unevaluated context. And, and, and this one can be, okay, so we need it in evaluated context. But there is here another thing that we use is empty, is void. Um, so using that with overloads for certain amounts, I mean, it supports uh, single, uh, zero arguments, or in this case, uh, single argument, or two, or three, or four. We can expand that for five arguments and, and so on. And then eventually we have something that can support even a user-defined struct, like we have one, we have two, and we can have the tuple and the one, and each one of them goes to the proper function. Okay, that's nice. But we used here something which is coming here from uh, Silang, and um, we also uh, needed some kind of overload for all the cases. And if we have five, we have to create another line. So I, we are trying to find something a bit nicer. Okay, so I'm coming to pattern matching. Uh, Herb Sutter uh, proposed is and as um, syntax that allows you to ask whether a certain type is of a, uh, a certain variable is of a certain type. And if so, you get a conversion to the type or, or, or you get it to the type that you want and you can use it. Um, this is a link to uh, CppCon 2021. You can see the lecture there. This is a link to the actual proposal. Uh, maybe we can take a look at this example. Uh, we have here a foo function that gets an auto x, and then I'm asking whether x is uh, a string. So uh, auto s is a string equals x. It means that if x is a string, then I want to get it as s, and, and then I want s to be a string. Okay? 
So, uh, and then I can use something that says, okay, I know that this is a string, so I can call something which says, mm, but I know that it is a string. Uh, and here I'm asking, uh, can you do that? I mean, is um, X something that can be structure binded into two ints, in which case I want it to be binded into A and B. Now, if it fails, it is not compilation at all. I mean, it just tries. Can I do that? Oh, if not, I'm fine. I would seek another one. Or it might be that none of the conditions is uh, uh, fulfilled, and then nothing would happen. And then in our main, can you tell me what is printed in the main? If we run this main, what would be the result? I mean, we need a proper compiler that supports that. But we have one. The compiler that supports that is circle. We are going to use circle. Uh, by the way, in the 2021 talk at CPPCon, Herb Sato called uh, Sean Baxter to the stage, and they just played with this proposal on the circle compiler. So I'm going to use circle here, uh, which is supported in Compiler Explorer. What should be printed here? First line would be, uh, somebody here says H. Do you think that H would be printed? When the answer is no, because a low is a char star, and a char star is converted to string, but it's not a string. And when you call is, you ask uh, whether actually it is a string. So a low would not go to any of the conditions. On the other end, world would go, because world is a string with a little s over there. I mean, uh, let's assume that we have uh, using namespace to string, string literals. Okay, we use string literals, so world s is a string. So world would go, get into the first um, uh, check, into the first uh, um, uh, condition. Uh, the tuple would get into the second one. And I think that we should get here the printout of W and one and two. Let's take a look. So this is circle. I mean, you see here circle, okay? We can play with things that are not in the language yet, but we can play with them. Uh, so this is the exact same program, and we get your W and 1 and 2. If we also want the H, how can we get the H? Let's add an S here. Eh, we get the H. Uh, if we do not want the 1 and 2, just add the 3. Can we have else? Uh, yeah, I think we can. Why not? Else uh, stood out. Sorry. Uh, so eventually we um, kind of ask, can you be converted or are you of type uh, string or are you of type uh, which is structure bindable to, to into two ints, uh, which is nice, but it is not yet in C++. Uh, it's not an if cons expression, right. Uh, it, it, it actually, I think in this case, can it be an if cons expression? Might be because this is a template function, right? So you actually know the type. But oh, I think that it has also the uh, behavior of dynamic cast in a way. So here it might be that I could drop in a const exper and it would work. Uh, maybe I have to add the cons expert to the other as well, or not. Anyhow, it seems that the cons expert here works fine. Um, but anyhow, it, it um, yeah, I'm, it is interesting to, to ask whether without the cons expert it is being checked at compile time. I guess yes. I guess it is. It depends on the way that uh, Circle implemented that. So, uh, what can we do with this uh, new feature, with this knowledge? Oh, we wanted to implement, are you structure bindable? So in a way, like we do here, we can play with, okay, let's try to bind you. Okay, so using this technique, what we want to achieve is something like, let's have a structure bindable concept, and then inside, let's ask T, 
Here we do not use the is, we use the as. Uh, we want to take T as three dots. Now three dots means, oh, we want to bind you to, um, you know, the, the amount of uh, variables that are in T, the amount of bindable arguments in T. Is it possible? Yes. Uh, I, I mean, it is not currently in the language, but it is supported, it is in the proposal, this kind of uh, uh, syntax, and then Circle implemented that. So if we have something like that, then maybe, you remember that eventually we want not only to ask, are you structure bindable, because this does the trick. We also want to ask, are you structure bindable, and you have two arguments, because we want to use the arguments. We want inside the function, we want to ask you, are you a tuple? So the fact that you are structure bindable is nice, but we want something more. So the next thing that we can tell, that we can say is, okay, maybe we can ask whether you are a single element structure bindable. Uh, and we can do that by, suppose that we have some kind of a function inside, in the, inside the struct, this is a struct. And inside the function, we try to uh, bind a single variable, and, and this one must be bindable. I mean, you should have at least one. At least one. You can have more. Again, this is not C++. It is a proposal. It is, uh, we would compile it with Circle. And then we can get the first type. And the first type is the declare type of the return value of first. Okay, so I know that you have at least one, and I even know the type of this one. Okay. Um, now I can uh, ask, uh, uh, I can create a concept saying that you are a single element structure bindable if, um, if you are, uh, if your T can be binded to the value, to the type that comes out from the structure above. Which means that you have only one, because if you would have more than one, this would not compile because we bind you the T as a single element inside the brackets. And we actually ask you to be bindable to the type that we uh, found above. Okay, so you, you are a single element structure bindable if you obey to this. Uh, what about being a two element structure bindable? So let's, try, let's start with a two element structure bindable helper, which would say that uh, you have a first and you have a second and we have your first type and your second type. Okay, and then the concept would say that uh, you are uh, two elements structure bindable if you can be binded to two elements, the first one and the second one that we just saw before. Yeah, we can do that. Um, and then we can say that you are tuple if you are not a single element structure bindable and you are two elements structure bindable. And the reason that in the concept I'm deliberately asking you not to be a single element structure bindable is that first I know that you are structure bindable. And this one is not hard error. It is either, it started with a concept. The first one was a concept, okay, that might be true or false, but should not fail, should not give an error. So the first one can be a true or false. Uh, if I would just go directly to the two element structure bindable inside, I'm trying to do something that might be hard error. So before, uh, it might be hard error if you are a single element structure bindable. Because inside, I'm trying to um, bind you to two. So in order to avoid uh, having the hard error, I'm just asking in the concept, okay, first you have to be structure bindable, then you should not be uh, a single structure bindable, and then you should be uh, two element structure bindable. Now, uh, um, this one uh, would go fine if you are uh, two element structure bindable. Um, let's take a look. So we have here, we have here uh, the structure bindable that we saw before. Uh, we have here the single element structure bindable. Uh, let's take a look at the main. So in the main, we have here, we even have a vec with three and we assert that VEC3 is not two elements structure bindable. On the other hand, and VEC2 is two elements structure bindable. And the static assert works well. 
Uh, I don't see here whether we have a single one. We can create a single one as well. Let's create. And it works on a struct, which was not something we could do before. So let's have only a one. Two elements actually bindable vec one should fail. I think this static assert should fail, and it does fail. So let's add a not at the beginning. Uh, if you are vec one, you are not two element structure bindable. So we played a bit with concepts, trying to use the as um, syntax, um, which is a nice step. Um, a note, if you try to create something like tuple, is T as auto and auto? Well, this doesn't compile because you cannot just drop auto inside the brackets. Um, don't try that. You can go to the link and see that I tried. Uh, it would not work. Uh, but very tricky, also from the meetup, uh, just said, OK, but I have an idea. You can do something else. You can create a struct called anything. Oh, this relates to, I think, what Daisy presented yesterday, right? You can create a struct, let's call it anything, which can get actually anything. Now, you cannot use tooDanny because tooDanny has some kind of limitations which do not actually accommodate all types. And our anything does accommodate anything, okay? And now I can say, okay, you're a tuple if, if you can be binded to, to anything. And, and anything can be binded, binded to anything because anything has a very uh, permissive constructor. And, and this should work. Let's take a look. And, and it is nice. It is quite, quite short, quite concise, much easier. I have anything. Uh, I require you with circle. It's not C++. I mean, it, it might, it may be C++, maybe C++ 26. It is not going into 23. Um, I want to uh, require T to be bindable to two anything. Okay, and I can take anything. I mean, here I try it with two ints, I can try it with two doubles, but it should work with anything because eventually anything can go to uh, um, forwarding reference of T. Uh, this is nice, I think. Let's try another thing. Uh, can we have another generic one, like structural bindable with two? I mean, what we had before is we try to have, are you a tuple? So in order to ask, are you a triple? Are you a quadple, quad, quadratic uh, something? Uh, we need to create another one. And, and the question is, can we create something more generic? Like, are you structured but not bindable with number of arguments that I would provide? at compile time, and then I can use that in, in, in either to um, implement tuple or just to say in the constraint that I expect a structure bindable with two. So um, we actually can do that based on another proposal. I think it is Barry Revzin, uh, which has a very neat proposal. I don't know why, why it was not pushed very quickly into the language of using uh, dot, uh, three dots, and, and uh, in the indices on variadic, variadic packs. But um, we, can, we can ask uh, whether T, here T is something that is structural bindable maybe. We, we ask, what is the size of three dots on T? Now, now T is not variadic pack. But it, the, the, the proposal extends things to, oh, you can actually ask size off on anything that is structure bindable, including structs, which does the trick for us. This is what we want. So it's, it's quite easy. You are structure bindable with size if your size off of T is size. And, and this can be asked only on something which is structure bindable. Can we check that with circle? Let's try. Maybe Circle implemented that. We have a link. Let's, let's check if it works. So 
uh, we have here a structure bindable with, which says, okay, size of T. T is not a variadic pack. It's a single argument. Um, does it have this size? And, and here we have static cells. Structure bindable of a tuple of two ints. Is it a tuple of two ints? Is, is it, does it have two arguments? And the, the answer is yes. The static assert works. And it does work also on user-defined um, structs, like, for example, VEC3 and VEC2. Um, so it is much easier. And then we can create a function which expects a structure bindable with two, which is you can recognize that this is our tuple, right? But the same thing can be, uh, like, for example, we can ask for structure bindable of three with three, et cetera. So in this case, uh, these can go to foo, but this would not. I mean, I can create another overload. Let's create an overload. Let's just check it. So if I try to call to foo with these, they do not obey to the constraint because they are not structure bindable with two, right? So let's create another foo. Uh, the other foo would say I'm the generic foo, right? This is the syntax for uh, I'm a constrained auto variable, and this is the unconstrained template, abbreviated template. So this is the generic version, but inside I cannot, I, I, I cannot take the values, so I would just output something like uh, else, I don't know. And we see that all the other cases go to the else, right? Now, the other cases, I think some of them are with three arguments. So maybe we can create, this would be very easy. We, create, we can create a foo with three arguments. Yes, I think well, that we can do that. So if you have three arguments, then I want to bind you to three, and then I can actually also print C. Uh, and then some of you go to the three elements option which is quite easy. So uh, we can ask you, are you structure bindable with the exact number that we expect in this function? Uh, and this was based on the simple size of three dots on something that is structure bindable. Getting back to the slides. Uh, some references on what we uh, saw. The main resource is a question in Stack Overflow. Um, uh, thanks to Dvirit Traki from uh, the Meetup group uh, who contributed many of the ideas behind this talk. Additional related resources are in this slide. Thank you. If you have any question, I'm here. Yes. How can I get a circle compiler? Uh, I, I can, how can you get the circle compiler? So uh, the circle compiler is open source. You can find it on GitHub and then uh, uh, write, and, and, and then you can compile it and, and use it. Uh, and you have it also on uh, Compiler Explorer. So I am using it in Compiler Explorer, but uh, you can find it on the web. 